Let's find out from Jason what this really spells in terms of investment strategy. So, so you have this huge dichotomy between where the U.S. equity markets are and how the data points have been faring. What does this really spell for you? I think it, meant, it, it spells two things. Uh, simplistically, when you look at the chart, it's either U.S. equities are too high Hmm. Um, because macroeconomic surprises are too low, or macroeconomic surprises are too low and therefore should catch up with, with, with US equity markets. So, so who's, which, who's which leader? happens first? Yeah. <laughs> so who's the leader? And look, in, in this context, what this does, and I think we pointed out this chart for your viewers because we like asymmetric trades, because hmm. asymmetric trades are where you have a better probability of making money. So what I would say to that is US equities are pricing in a very benign environment. They're, they're pricing a, a, a sharp recovery from weather-related port and port data that, that's been affecting the macroeconomics surprise index lower. Mm. But so when, when we're already pricing something in for perfection, that can only leave doubt. So when I look at that and I, and I see doubt, I know that the upside is capped and the downside probably isn't. Mm. So US equities, in my mind, pretty vulnerable. Really? And what does that mean for global equities? Well, I, I think it's global equities, we then need to go into the, the whole fixed income debate. And, and the whole fixed income debate is, is, is back to the, our previous topic of, of, of Yellen and Co. Global bonds markets are, uh, yields are bottoming. That, that, that in, my, in, in, in our view, is, is, is a certainty. Whether they bottom now or in the next couple of months, they're bottoming. Mm. So the technical factors is we're starting to get a, a, a rejection of absolute negative yields. And when we look at real yields, and when we account for inflation as well, there's a, there's a point in time where investors don't want to lose money by investing in bonds. Mm. And that's essentially what they're doing. So what that does is it forces them back out up to different, up to different risk curves and risk, risk tolerances. So what you start to get is that you move away from bond markets where your yields are either nothing to, to negative and into more risky assets. And more risky assets can be equities or mm. they could be high yield or alternative assets. And let's bring Paul into the conversation. Do you agree? Do you feel that uh, whether it's now or in a couple of weeks from now that global yields have bottomed when in fact core yields kept on have been going lower post ECB and even Yellen? Well, clearly we've been in this long period of low yields. We see that continuing. Mm. Um, we were talking about, you know, in the U.S. Uh, having upside towards the end of the year uh, in terms of the Fed. But clearly investors are moving into risk-based investing. Mm. From our end, retail investors more heavily into equities. The fundamentals still look strong in the U.S. Go back and talk about oil. When oil drops by 50 percent, you see a huge shift macroeconomically as well as geopolitically. And the strength of the U.S. we see in the mid to long term will continue. Um, but I think to the earlier point, and there's volatility, and you can't ignore the volatility that there will be surprises. And we're talking about the markets building in pricing with no surprises. And right there, there's risk. But we see that risk is short term. Rather so than long in terms term. of portfolio positioning and what you're telling clients, are you telling, to, telling them to build up risk? What we're saying is the first thing is the most risky thing you can do in a portfolio is overconcentrate. And whether that's in fixed income or an individual stock, and really to go back and have those conversations about diversification. Because bonds, but especially high yields, were performing so well for three, four years, that there was, clients had a portfolio that were overconcentrated in high yields. Mm -hmm. And there really was risk. And we saw the initial risk in the U.S. at the end of last year um, as high yield markets really bumped along because of oil prices and shale oil producers have, you know, 17%. Uh, concentration of issuing in high yield, you saw that drop last year in high yield prices out of the U.S. I think that was the first sort of bounce around that we really could go back and communicate to our clients that there really is risk. Mm -hmm. You know, with that yield, you're getting that high yield, there is risk built into that. Right, right. So the key is, for those clients willing to take risk, it really is to move into equities, to both in terms of DM side, but also on emerging side as well. Yeah, and just very quickly, Jason, how do you react to that in light of the fact that people still feel like there is more upside in our risk assets? The base effects of oil are going to run off. So the base effects really run off very quickly in August and September. So all of a sudden you're starting to negate the big inflation, disinflation problem that we've had. Therefore, if you start to create some inflation, that will certainly give you the end or, or, or the lows of, of, of the bond markets. Mm. So, look, I think what we're, what we're set for is an increase in, in bond yields. I think what that will lead to is a decrease in the ownership of equity defences, which are yielding assets. When's and that going to happen? Uh, I think that happens probably as early as... It's already happening, actually. It's been happening in Europe mm. for, for the last two quarters, in the US for the last quarter. I think a continuation of that trend for the next 
multi years mm. is, is actually is, is actually the interesting trade. Yeah, the trend is your friend. It's really uh, tough to predict, and that's why you guys are doing what you're doing. Really appreciate it, uh, Paul. We've got to leave it there. We'll, Thank you very much. We'll talk again very soon. Paul Hodes of Citibank.